What's up, everybody? Today I'm wearing this red 72 Chevelle you see behind me. Uh, it's a good friend of mine's car. If you follow me on Instagram um, or Facebook, you see me a lot of times. I'll tag or uh, hashtag Streetcar Mafia. And this is John. He's the kind of the face behind Streetcar Mafia. And um, he's had this car a few years. Pretty neat little 72. Like I said, red, black stripe, 354 speed, 12 bolt. Um, car came out of Canada. He's got all the Canadian paperwork where it was sold new. Uh, just a really just super nice just cool car um, like I said small block has air um, a lot of little custom touches and stuff to it that John's done over a few years but um, a few weeks ago you seen me I pulled the uh, TKO 600 out of a Buick GS that was a good friend of John's um, he swapped it for the new TKX well John he purchased the TKO 600 um, so today basically I've already got the Muncie 4 speed already out of the car um, I've got the Muncie and the TKO side by side. I'm going to show you some of the main differences on that. Um, then I'll show you some of the differences once it's in the car. Um, but like I said, this is just a super nice car. John's done a real good job with this car. And, um, so I'm going to spin this thing around and show you some differences. All right, so I got the Muncie and the TKO sitting side by side. Basically, with the Muncie, you see, obviously, cases are totally different. Um, the Muncie is a four speed, Tremec is a five speed. One of the main differences, this is either an M20 or M21 Muncie. Um, those were the only two that were available with the 10 spline input shaft. You can see that the Tremec has a 26 spline input shaft. So obviously we went ahead and changed the clutch and pressure plate setup. Um, this car does not have a hydraulic throwout bearing as the TKX did, or the um, TKO had. So it does not have a shaft here for the hydraulic throwout bearing to ride on. Um, the Muncie basically has just a linkage style shifter. Um, you can see it's basically got three, le three levers on it. Basically, these are all your forward gears. The small one is your reverse lever. However, the Tremec, you see the top case, it's got several different shifter locations. That one has a rear shift. It has their white lightning shifter or an earlier version of it. So you can actually clock the shifter and that's what these pieces are. You see that came from American Powertrain. The Muncie, it has a cable driven speedometer right there the Tremec it has a cable driven speedometer location here electronic back here and also has a um, switch for reverse lights that you tie into um, both of them both use the four bolt front flange or uh, front bolt pattern um, I'm assuming, if and somebody can correct me if I'm wrong, on a Muncie, you see this is where the counter shaft is. It goes through the case. And I'm assuming that is the bigger side of the uh, five speed, but I'm not 100% sure. Um, Muncie, it does have a fill port right there. And most of the cases do have a drain. This one's either been broke off and filled in or just never had one drilled and tapped. Um, the Tremec has drain and fill plugs. You can also see on the top there, it has a vent. But basically the car, as I've already got it on the lift, you can see I've already got new, um, I had the flywheel surfaced, got the new clutch pressure plate in it. The bell housing is back on i've got to tighten the bolts for it clutch forks back in it and i will have to like i said this one still has a linkage style clutch so basically i'll put the little push rod back in the clutch fork there um still got to put a new throw out bearing in it got a little dust cover back on it i will have to adjust the um, new throw out bearing um with the different mounting location on the Tremec, i will Still use the factory cross member. I will just end up re-drilling the bolt holes that are in the frame over here on both sides. Um, slide it back and get it in the right position. I'll still be able to 
reuse all the factory emergency brake cable set up. Um, with this one, he went ahead and got the piece where I can actually use the cable driven speedometer, which will be nice. So all that just basically goes back in. So really other than changing the pressure plate and the clutch, just because the inputs, um, the input shaft spline difference really is kind of plug and play. Um, he did purchase the direct fit kit from American Powertrain. So when we go back with it, we will no longer use the original drive shaft that was in it. We could, there, I have a local several local drive shaft shops that I use that I could have that shortened and put new joints in. But with the kit that he purchased through American Powertrain, I will basically do some measuring, fill out a little spec sheet, send it back, and pretty much next week we should have a drive shaft you know, made and sent to our door. Um, you see that's the old throwout bear and it was definitely time for one. And that is the old transmission mount and the old pressure plate and clutch assembly. Uh, John, John, he's definitely got a heavy foot and he does some burnouts from time to time and the flywheel and that clutch and pressure plate had seen better days and he didn't been complaining to me about some, it done slip with him a few different times. So I said, American Powertrain hooked us up with all that stuff. I've got the speedometer adapter set up, the new, not sure what material they make their mounts out of. I'm not sure if this is a, some type of Dell or in, but it's a fairly hard, what feels like plastic. I mean, you can actually, you can dig into it with your fingernail a little bit. Um, but got the new throw out bearing, um, mount bolts. Like I said, they even sent pressure plate bolts for us, um, spec sheets on, on everything, new white ball. And then I already, I'm gonna reuse his factory um, her shift lever with the white lightning shifter um, so that should all go pretty good but basically I'm fixing to go ahead and throw it back in the car after I tighten the bell housing up go ahead and get the clutch adjusted get the initial adjustment on it done and then um, pretty much I'll get ready to button everything back up and measure for his drive shaft so we can get it on the way um, John also brought me a steering gearbox new rag joint and one hose that he forgot to swap on the car a couple years ago. And then also got a pair of Black Widow mufflers that I'm gonna get rid of these Flowmasters that have been on here for a few years. John's just ready for it to sound a little bit different. But uh, you can see we are getting a nice midsummer Georgia storm. Uh, my shop's right behind the fire department. And the fire trucks just left. It's thunder and lightning real bad so hopefully everything's okay but i've been over here just working on the chevelle and uh, found one little issue i want to show you spin this thing around um went ahead and got the throw out bearing put in um basically throw out bearing it just rides on the clutch fork inside these clips and um as the input shaft goes in it'll center itself um and it actually it rides pretty much in the center of the clips um but on chevelle camaro most gm stuff um, from the 60s you see that there is a Z bar here that actually what um, your clutch pedal inside is connected to and basically there's a ball that is right in there on the block and there's a ball on the other side um, but basically clutch pedals connect to a rod which connects to the Z bar and as you push the pedal down it pushes this part of the Z bar this way which there's a rod that connects the Z bar to the clutch fork and that's what just engages and disengages your throw out bearing um, I went ahead and put that rod back in, popped the throwout bearing in it, and was basically the throwout bearing was just riding the pressure plate. So I'm sure that's most likely what smoked his clutch. Johnny complained about the clutch pedal letting all the way out at the top. So um, basically, now what I ended up doing was take the rod loose, I'll go over here to my vise. Um, I had ran out of adjustment. This rod is basically threaded. Um, and you see this piece right here has a um, small pinhole for a cotter key. It's threaded inside and you just, you know, adjust this. It has a jam nut. And that's how you adjust your free play for your throwout bearing. And pretty much it was already bottomed out. Whoever installed it and adjusted it last time did not take the time to um, put more threads on this rod. So um, I added probably at least another inch, inch and a half threads. I'm just to put this thing back together and go ahead and get it adjusted. And, um, then I'll be ready to go ahead and slide the transmission in. You can see I got the TKO 600 installed. 
Still no drive shaft. We were waiting on a drive shaft from American Powertrain. When you order one of their swap kits, they would basically send you a sheet. Um, you fill out your measurement specs for what transmission, length, and then what um, U joint you need for your rear end. Um, fax them or email them the uh, sheet, and they'll basically cut you a drive shaft, make it, and then they will ship it out to you. So we are expecting a drive shaft within the next day or two. But you see, I reused the factory cross member. I did have to re drill. Um, this hole, this this frame actually already had a few holes in it, so I had to redrill one hole on each side. Um, got the new Delrin mount. Went with the speedometer cable adapter that they send. Um, earlier in the video, I talked about how I had to rethread the. Uh, clutch push rod to get enough adjustment for my throw out bearing and I've got it loosely adjusted however I was going back with it and really didn't pay any attention when I tore it apart I realized that it does not have a clutch return spring um, and so basically that is another problem that reason why the uh, throw out bearing was just riding the pressure plate in the clutch was without a return spring there's no way for the clutch fork to push all the way forward when you let out on the clutch. So we we're already waiting on the drive shaft, so I went ahead and ordered a factory clutch return spring and a clutch return spring bracket that goes on the frame. However, because this setup has headers, I will most likely end up cutting the bracket or trying to do a um, clamp on tube style mount for the spring. Um, but either way, I'll get the return spring on it and finish adjusting the clutch. I did have to um, cut one ear off right up in here for the trans tunnel. There's still a good bit of clearance, but I had to trim one ear on the um, transmission. This car did not have um, reverse lights wired up, so I didn't have to mess with that. I did have to trim the shifter hole just a hair. Um, but everything else, like I said, was an easy install. You can see I got the emergency brake cables all hooked back and adjusted. So we're pretty much good to go. Um, once the drive shaft's in, I've already put fluid in the transmission. Um, he's got two Flowmasters on there now. I've got to swap them for a pair of Black Widows. I'll get them welded in here in the next day or so. But I went ahead and installed, he ordered a new Borgeson steering box. Um, real happy with these, I've used them several different times. It's a close ratio box, so should have a better feel to it. But um, got the new rag joint. Um, the Borgeson box have a different input shaft spline count, so I had to change that out. Which anytime you need, if you're gonna change a box, if it doesn't already have a new um, rag joint on it, you need to put one on. But added the one of the uh, other stainless braided hoses. He already had one on, but um, the other one was not installed yet, so. I, got it. But all I got to do is put some power steering fluid in it and really just put some test miles on it and pretty much be ready to send this one on home. American Powertrain, they sent us a drive shaft. Already got it installed. Fit perfect. I said they basically go off the spec sheet that I measure for and uh, went right in. However, we did have a couple of little small issues. Um, the car had an H pipe in it, so I had to cut, pretty much cut it out, cap it off um, because of the difference in the diameter of the drive shaft. American Powertrain actually sends a uh, drive shaft just a little bit bigger diameter, um, so easy fix there. And like I said, I capped it off that way just in case later if John decides to put an H pipe back, we can. Um, he just wanted to see what it would sound like with the Black Widows without that. Like I said, I already got them cut and welded in. So we're good to go there. Tailpipes, they both still fit really good. And I actually ended up uh, splitting into the mufflers. That way the tailpipes can come off and uh, makes the um, exhaust a little bit easier to drop if you ever have to pull it out for any reason. Um, the only other issue I had was um, the emergency brake cables. They were hitting the drive shaft and um, that was a really easy fix. Um, whoever had actually set that up originally, they just, they didn't know off the top of their head how factory cables worked. 
they had bent two little small hooks up um, that they had in floor braces to kind of put tension on the cables and I'll spin this thing around so you see um, factory setup basically has one hook goes on the passenger side in the cross member and then the cables they just you know hook to your rear cables there hook to the front cable there one hook and then same on the other side um, they had those other hooks here and here which nothing wrong with that but like I said it was not the factory way of doing it but all that's done so the only thing I had left I went ahead and kind of went old school I took a factory um, clutch spring bracket and added an extra hole in it so I could just hose clamp it to an exhaust tube runs a factory spring um, like I said clutch is all adjusted you see that it's pulled tight because of the spring so now the throw out bearing should release correctly like I said it's already in adjustment um, so pretty much I'm ready to take it down the road and put a couple test miles on it see how it goes um, pretty much the only thing I got left will be put power steering fluid in it before I do that and button this thing up alright you can see I got streetcar mafia John Chevelle finished up so that pretty much knocks out a TKO 600 overdrive swap into a 72 Chevelle. Um, going out the highway, overdrive, you know, RPMs are down. Just makes a great cruiser now. Um, getting rid of the Flowmasters and going to the Black Widows. Just got a really good sound to it. I think he'll be happy with that. So I said don't forget to like, subscribe, share the video, and follow Streetcar Mafia as well on Instagram and Facebook. Thanks for watching.